Okay, we're going to go ahead and get started with our presentation for today. I want to start by thanking everyone for joining us. Um, we're excited to present one of our technical partners today and all the benefits of utilizing them with uh, the Converge CFD software. I'd like to give a quick intro on um, kind of what Converge, who Converge is, because I know we have a few uh, clients of TechPlot that may not be as familiar with what we do here at Convergent Science. So our, our key or flagship product is Converge CFD software. This year we actually celebrate 10 years of actually selling the software. And some of our key benefits or areas that we do really well in are uh, moving geometries, complex problems, and a host of other benefits that you see there on the screen. Um, our key application area is internal combustion engines, but we are, are starting to venture out and actually seeing some really great results and finding success in some of the other areas, such as gas turbines, after treatment, um, and some of the other applications that you also see there on the screen. Um, however, that being said, our key feature um, and the differentiating feature is our automated mesh refinement. Um, it's called AMR. And basically what we do is we're able to uh, basically automate the mesh at runtime. So again, if you are new to Converge software or haven't really heard of Convergent Science, I do invite you to reach out to us. We have offices in Madison, Wisconsin, New Braunfels, Texas, Detroit, Michigan. Um, also for our European clients, we have an office in Linz, Austria. And one of our newer additions is in uh, India. So those areas, we have support engineers and technical folks that are ready to help you and assist you with your uh, complex problems. And we also have a distributor, uh, IDAJ, which is located um, in several of the Asian uh, markets. So again, we invite you to check out our website and um, reach out to us with some of your complex problems. Now, with that being said, um, post-processing is a very uh, important part in the simulation process, and we've, we're grateful to have some technical partners, uh, TechPlot being one of them. And so today we present Scott Fowler. Scott Fowler has been with TechPlot for nearly 20 years. He's the product manager there. And I, oh, one more thing I'd like to mention. If you have any questions, feel free to um, type those into the question box. We will try to get to your questions if time allows. If not, someone will follow up with you um, post presentation. So with that being said, I'm going to hand the control over to Scott. Thank you, Tiffany. Uh, just a, a quick introduction of myself. Like uh, Tiffany said, uh, my name's Scott Fowler. Uh, I've been with uh, TechPlot uh, since 1999, most of that time as a software developer. And in the last uh, three years or so, I've taken over as uh, product manager of TechPlot 360. Okay, so uh, the agenda for today, uh, I know that we do have uh, a, a mixed crowd here. Some people who uh, have used Converge and are not necessarily familiar with 360 and TechPlot 360, and some people who are familiar with TechPlot 360 but not necessarily Converge. And like Tiffany said, we're happy to be working closely with Convergent Science uh, over the past couple of months to uh, make our products work uh, better together. So uh, here's the, the general agenda today. I'm going to give you an introduction of, of who TechPlot uh, Incorporated is, uh, and then I'll give you a live demo of working with converged data in TechPlot 360. Uh, and we'll look at uh, cell averaged output files. We'll talk about uh, the latest version of PostConvert, which Convergent Science has done a great job in developing uh, to really work well with TechPlot 360. We'll talk about displaying parcels, uh, exploring your three-dimensional data using slices, stream traces, and isosurfaces, uh, and then uh, exporting images and movies. And, and throughout all of this, we'll talk about customizing the TechPlot 360 user interface and automation using uh, what we call macros and uh, our new Python language. So uh, 
First off, who is TechPlot? Well, we have a mission of helping engineers and scientists discover, analyze, and understand information in complex data and to effectively communicate the results. Uh, we focused exclusively on post-processing software uh, back in uh, the early 2000s, uh, and, and we've really taken pride in building a piece of software that we think uh, really does help fulfill this mission. So TechPlot at a glance, we were founded in 1981 uh, by a couple of Boeing engineers uh, in Seattle, Washington. We're currently, uh, our offices are currently in Bellevue, Washington, a, a city uh, right next door. Uh, we pride ourselves on being the largest independent CFD post processor on the market with over 47,000 users worldwide uh, across a very wide range of industries. Uh, so yeah, we are known for being the most complete and flexible post processing tool with uh, the integration of not only the extensive 3D plotting, uh, but 2D plotting and uh, line plotting as well. Uh, and we are focused on uh, the large data and emerging needs of the CFD community. Uh, one thing that we realize is that uh, as computing power uh, becomes more prevalent, uh, Moore's law doubling CPU speeds every uh, 18 months, uh, we are seeing more and more CFD being run, larger and larger grids being run, and we are actively working on solutions for that. So let's uh, get into some of the solutions that we uh, that we offer. Uh, but first, uh, TechPlot is trusted. We're used by some of the biggest engineering companies worldwide. Uh, some of these uh, companies have been customers with us for 10, 15, even 20 years. So uh, we're, we're really uh, widely trusted and, and widely used across industries. So our desktop solutions, our flagship product is TechPlot 360, uh, which is used for CFD visualization and analysis. Uh, TechPlot 360 uh, comes with you know, all the 3D data exploration features that you would expect, slices, isosurfaces, streamlines, and like I said on uh, the previous slide, we also do some very nice uh, 2D plotting and line plotting. Included with TechPlot 360 is TechPlot Chorus. Uh, this is a, a desktop tool for design space exploration, so if you're doing any parametric studies uh, or uh, designs of experiments, uh, this is a great tool for, for that type of work. Uh, TechPlot Focus uh, is, uh, I like to think of it as TechPlot 360's baby brother. Uh, it's really designed for uh, test and experimental data. Uh, it's limited to 5 million uh, data points per data set. So if you have smaller data, this is a great entry into the TechPlot products. Uh, and then developer solutions. So not just uh, we're not just about GUI software, uh, desktop software. We also have a, a number of tools for, for those of you that are, say, in a methods group and trying to design uh, workflows for your engineers. Uh, Tech.io is a library available for reading and writing TechPlot data file formats. It's available in C++ and Fortran. Uh, we do have an MPI version available, uh, and source code is available if you do need to uh, compile against a specific version of MPI. Uh, the TechPlot ADK, uh, this is a way that you can develop custom data loaders or customize the TechPlot 360 user interface uh, with C++ or Fortran. And then finally, introduced in early 2017 is PyTechPlot, uh, our new Python language uh, that can be used for automating TechPlot 360, integrating with other Python tools, and even creating custom user interfaces, which I'll show an example of today. All right, so now we'll dive into uh, a live demo of using TechPlot 360 with converged data. Uh, and as I mentioned, we'll look at the cell average output files, uh, talk about uh, the latest version of post-convert, uh, displaying parcels uh, using slices, stream traces, and isosurfaces, uh, image export, movie export, and then uh, customizing. So before I dive into this, let, let me just make a, a statement about uh, the post-convert utility. Uh, Convergent Science has put uh, a a nice bit of effort into post-convert. Uh, it was uh, released uh, in early March, an update to it, which does a really great job with the TechPlot format. So uh, if you are running Converge uh, and have tried TechPlot 360 uh, in the past uh, or the TechPlot output from post-convert, please do give it a try again. Uh, they've done a really great job with, with the tool. So uh, we'll jump into TechPlot 360. And for those of you that haven't seen TechPlot 360 before, I'll give you uh, just a, a, a quick little tour. Uh, 
So uh, when you first start TechPlot 360, you have what we call the welcome screen with links to all of our documentation and online resources. Uh, tell you your version number down here. On the left side, we call this the plot sidebar, uh, which will uh, have more information once I load a data set. Uh, we have pages. Uh, so think of uh, pages as a uh, like a worksheet in Excel or a tab in uh, in Chrome. Uh, you can have multiple pages in TechPlot 360. We have here what we call our quick macro panel. So if you have any uh, custom scripts that you want to run, you can access them very easily. And then down here, probing, if you need to find information about your data set, it's available there. So we'll start with loading uh, a cell averaged output file. And we'll uh, open uh, emissions.out. Uh, mm -hmm. Now, to open this file, uh, we're going to use our general text loader. So we'll just select that to instruct TechPlot to use that specific loader. And now we're presented with the user interface. Uh, and this is a very general loader for uh, effectively any type of text file. So what's really important here is to understand uh, what that text file looks like in order to uh, populate this with the proper instructions. So I'll bring up Notepad++ here with that emissions.out uh, file. And the uh, important points on this file are uh, the variables. Variables are uh, listed on line three. Uh, the data is all listed on line six and through the end of the file. And then uh, on the variable line, we have this uh, hash mark that we need to ignore. And so those are the three key points uh, for loading this. For those of you that haven't run Converge before, uh, these dot out files are uh, produced uh, as part of the run. So each one of these would represent uh, an iteration of the, of the solver, each line. So we'll go into variables and we'll say uh, that variables we want to start and end on line three uh, in the data tab, we have this set up to start on line six and go through the end of the file. And then in general data filters, we're going to say ignore columns in position one. So that's how we ignore that, uh, that hash mark. And if I want specific variables to load, I can go back into that variables dialog and say select variables to load. And uh, here, let's just load uh, crank, uh, NOx, and carbon monoxide. And so, so now we have our have our plot. Uh, you can see that uh, we only have NOx on the uh, on the y-axis here uh, to uh, see the other ones uh, or the carbon monoxide. We go into what we call the mapping style dialog, and we can see that we have uh, what TechPlot calls a line map. Uh, so we'll just activate this, and it's off the screen. So I'll do a Control F. Uh, this is also available under View, uh, Fit to Full Size, and so now we can see my in, entire data set. Now, what I really want to do here is I want to compare this against uh, an, another run. So let's go ahead and append another uh, another data set. So we'll go to uh, run two, and again, we'll look for emissions.out, and we'll open this, and we'll say append data to active frame. And all of these settings have, have been retained, uh, except for this one. So we'll go back, and we'll say I just want crank. NOx and carbon monoxide and bring those in. Okay, and now, now the data's been loaded, but it, it doesn't show up. So let's let's find out where, where it went. So we go into data, uh, data set info. This is a really key dialogue in TechPlot 360. It tells you all about the data that you've loaded. Uh, so we see that we have zone one and zone one. Well, this is from our first run. So we'll just double click on this and say run one and we'll double click on my second zone and say run two. That way we can identify these and we can see uh, the differences between these. So run one, we did uh, 8,200 iterations. Uh, run two, uh, a little over 12,000. Now to get these to display, we'll go into the mapping style dialog and we'll select these two uh, maps. We can copy them, uh, but we now want these to point to run number two and we'll display those. And so now we can see both run one and run two here, but we can't quite tell them apart. Uh, so let's add a legend. And then we'll rename these to include the zone name in there to help identify them. 
And then finally, we'll uh, give uh, run one uh, symbols that are a, a delta and a gradient, and we can uh, turn on the symbols. Uh, because there were so many iterations, the symbols are quite dense, so uh, we can set up the symbol spacing. Uh, I like my symbols a little smaller and uh, filled with the line color. And so now we have a really nice plot uh, comparing, I just double clicked on that, we'll move this over, uh, and we have now a really nice plot uh, showing the differences between run one and run two. So uh, what I'm really trying to get across here in, in this plot is that TechPlot does have a lot of control over uh, over line plots uh, and, and really helps you create nice uh, production quality plots that you can be proud of when you put into a, a paper or communicate with your uh, with your colleagues. Uh, if you do need to share this outside of TechPlot, uh, we do have some very nice export tools, uh, in particular for line plots, uh, using the vector-based output such as PostScript or WMF make really, really nice uh, plots when you put those into, uh, into papers or into PowerPoint. Okay, so that, that covers line plots. Uh, so we'll just uh, rename this page here to emissions and let's add a new page and, and load some additional data. So here we're going to move on to, uh, on to working with uh, parcel information. So we'll go back into uh, run one and uh, output. We're going to select our tech plot PLT loader. Now I've I've already uh, run post convert uh, to convert uh, the converge output to tech plot format, and so we can just select uh, all of these and hit open. And you see that opened fairly quickly. So what does what does this represent here? Uh, we have uh, if we go to the data set tab, uh, we have a total of 93 million elements spread over about 145 time steps. Uh, so quite a lot of data loaded very quickly into uh, into TechPlot. Uh, you'll notice uh, one of the nice things that Convergent Science has done with the post-convert utility is uh, solution time uh, is actually, this is actually your crank angle. And one of the first things that uh, uh, users have asked me is how do I get that crank angle on the plot? Well, simple way to do that is using our text insert tools and we have what we call dynamic text. So we'll just say CA and then uh, use solution time. And as we step through, you can see that this updates. Now the, the formatting is, is a little bit longer than I want, so uh, we can uh, do some formatting here to shorten the, uh, shorten the string. So quite a lot of flexibility in how you can add text and format it. Now, uh, I talked about macros. Uh, and customizing. If you don't want to uh, have to remember that, you can register a, a macro on our on our quick macro panel here. Uh, and so I can just uh, double click, and uh, you can see that uh, that added a piece of text. So if you're doing some of these actions all the time, using this quick macro panel can be a really nice way to uh, uh, customize uh, your your workflows. Okay, so on to uh, on to parcels. So uh, in order to display parcels, we need to turn on our scatter layer. Uh, but by default, scatters are turned on for all of our zones. We only want to show scatters for the spray. So we'll go into our zone style dialog where all of the style settings about your data are, are set. So we'll select all of our zones except for spray and we'll turn off uh, scatter. Uh, so it's left on just for, just for one. And let's change this to uh, scatter points. Uh, points uh, render quite quickly and uh, allow you to see all of your uh, all of your sprays quite nicely. So we'll turn on uh, turn on scatter and we'll advance time uh, to uh, where the spray is uh, is is coming in. And we can turn on translucency and you can see the uh, the interior. So that's uh, quickly how you actually uh, how you display this. But uh, let's say you want to understand some of the attributes of your spray. So let's look at uh, the the DP film flag. So this uh, describe some attributes about uh, about your spray, whether it's uh, in the wall film, uh, whether it's in the volume, whether it's a rebounded parcel, etc. So we can do that by turning on uh, contour coloring. So we'll go here into uh, contour details and we'll set up 
uh, our contour coloring to use this DP film flag. And uh, we know that uh, Converge uses the values from zero to five to represent the, uh, the film flag. So we'll say uh, that we want levels from, uh, from zero to five. And then we'll go back into the zone style dialog and we'll tell this to use my, my contour group. And so now we can uh, see, see the different coloring. If we want some more distinct coloring, we can choose a different color map. Uh, qualitative dark two uh, works pretty nicely. So you can see uh, zero represents the parcels that are not in the wall film. Blue now represents ones that are, are in the wall film. And you can see how those change as you animate through your, through your data set. So really nice way to, uh, to look at parcels and understand them. Uh, another thing you may want to do is isolate uh, a certain set of, set of parcels. So here we have uh, quite a number of them. Uh, if I want to look at uh, just the ones that are in the wall film, I can use what we call value blanking. So we'll go into the value blanking dialog and we'll select our DP film flag variable and we'll say that uh, we want the uh, we want value blanking to be included when it's not equal to zero. So this is going to isolate just a single set of my parcels. Now again, I can automate this on uh, in the quick macro panel. Uh, we have a uh, a macro command called prompt for text strings. So uh, here I want to look at uh, just the parcels that are in the wall film, and that has gone and adjusted that value blanking. Uh, capability for me. So, uh, so that's parcels. And now let's add a new page. Uh, well, let's rename this first to, uh, we'll just call this spray. And we can add a new, uh, yet another page. And here we'll uh, we'll just flip to 3D. So now what this has done is it's shared the data set with that, uh, with that previous page. So we, we haven't actually loaded another data set. We're using uh, shared memory in this case. Uh, so it keeps TechPlot, uh, the, the memory footprint, uh, quite low. So now let's look at, uh, at using slices. So to add a slice, uh, it's quite easy. Uh, we have a, a slice tool here. Uh, you can just click and place it. You can see that that slice is uh, inside the volume. Uh, so again, on our on our quick macro panel, we'll just uh, double click uh, clip above primary slice, and we can see what that slice looks like. Uh, now, all of these all of these things on the quick macro panel, these are custom for this webinar, and we'll be sure to share out uh, share share the items on here uh, post webinar. So what I want to look at is is temperature. So a nice way to to do that is simply double click on the legend, and uh, then we can just change this to uh, to temperature. Uh, a color map that uh, I enjoy using is uh, one called Viridis. Again, this is not built into TechPlot yet, but uh, is you can incorporate your own color maps uh, through uh, the import color map. So that's what I've done here. Uh, Viridis is a, a pretty popular color map these days. And uh, I want to see what, uh, I want to know what a good uh, contour range to use here. So uh, again, we'll plot our, our maximum uh, contour value over time. Our current car contour value is temperature. So I can simply double click on this. You can see that we're advancing through time. And this has just created a line plot uh, showing uh, the maximum temperature for my data set uh, through time. So uh, you can see that uh, prior to the combustion phase, uh, temperature is fairly low. So let's choose a uh, contour range here of uh, about, uh, well, let's use the probe tool. Here we're, uh, temperature is about 1200, and here we're about 2800. So we'll adjust our contour levels uh, to about that range. So we'll say from, uh, let's say, 1000 to uh, 3000. TechPlot gives you the ability, uh, a lot of flexibility in how you want the layout of, of your frames. So what I'm dealing with here is a multi-frame layout. So I have uh, two frames here, one with a line plot, one with uh, a 3D plot. And uh, as we've said before, we have, we have multiple uh, pages as well. So uh, 
so I, I, I like I like this view of, of my data. Uh, you know, one of the uh, really important things for people using Converge uh, is, uh, like Tiffany said, it uses an adaptive mesh refinement. So this is the first time you've seen your mesh when you bring in your your data, and uh, when you uh, if you want to put a, a mesh on your on your slice. Uh, you can see uh, what the mesh looks like that Converge has created. So if, if we get a little bit closer to, uh, say, uh, crank angle zero, uh, where uh, combustion is, is occurring, uh, you can see how Converge has refined that mesh and, and what a nice job it's done. Okay, so we, we like this view here. Uh, let's create uh, another view. So I'll just uh, do a Control C, Control V. So now this has copied my frame and we'll drag it over here. So now I have two frames uh, uh, of the same data, uh, and but let's create a different view. So here I want to, uh, I'm going to uh, disable my clipping plane, and I wanna put my slice in a different position. I wanna get it aligned right here with the, uh, with the valve. So we'll choose the slice tool again. I'm gonna hit Y on the keyboard to make it Y aligned, and you can see uh, how how we got it right there aligned with the valves. And uh, then we'll just put it in a planar position. We'll turn off shade. And so now I can see uh, see my slice in this, uh, in this position here. And we'll go ahead and animate. And so now these are all linked through time uh, with, uh, with the animation tool. So a uh, really nice way to create a, a multi-frame layout that communicates uh, a lot about your data uh, very, very quickly. Uh, so we have not only a multi-frame layout, uh, a multi-page layout, so I can really create uh, a nice story that I'm sharing with, uh, sharing with my colleagues or, or communicating to, uh, to my manager. Uh, if I do need to save this out as a, a movie file, uh, I can do that uh, quite easily as as well. So uh, right here in uh, solution, uh, the time controls, I can go into details and just click on this film icon and select a, a couple of different movie formats. Uh, you know, MPEG-4, AVI are probably your best bets uh, for, for the movie formats. Uh, Anti-aliasing uh, with a super sample factor of three uh, makes for really nice crisp lines and really nice crisp text. Uh, and you can also uh, enter uh, the uh, the width uh, that you want that animation to uh, to go. So let me let me just show you an animation that I produced with an earlier layout. So as you can see here, you know, nice, nice looking animation, nice crisp text, uh, and uh, a, a great way to communicate your data, especially when you're dealing with this, uh, with this transient data that uh, that are produced by these internal combustion cases. Okay, so I, I haven't hit on uh, slices or, or I'm sorry, ISO surfaces or streamlines yet. Uh, I'll I'll just briefly talk about them. Uh, so ISO surfaces. Uh, are, are set up, uh, again, through here on, on what we call the derived objects. So these are, a derived object is, uh, is something that's created from your volume data. So uh, we can simply go into here and uh, into details. Uh, one thing that can oftentimes be difficult is figuring out, well, what's a good value for my ISO surface? Uh, and that's where TechPlot's probe tool comes in nicely. Uh, you can see that we have a, uh, a color band change here so we can click right on that and see our temperature it's uh, 1265 give or take so we can we can use that as a nice value for my for my ISO surfaces uh, again let me uh, disable clipping we'll turn on uh, translucency and uh, let's make that uh, even more translucent so we'll go into effects here and say 90% translucent and so now you can you can see your ISO surface in in that volume uh, quite nicely. So using the probe tool is a great way to figure out a, a good candidate uh, value for ISO surfaces. Uh, stream traces. Uh, we have a couple of different types of stream traces. Uh, volume lines. So that's a just a line that's going to go through your volume. Uh, volume rods and volume ribbons are also very nice uh, ways to display your your streamlines. Uh, so let's uh, let's grab a, a ribbon, and we'll 
uh, place a streamline uh, right here. So uh, very easy to, uh, to to place streamlines in your in your data set uh, just with uh, point and click. Uh, if you have very specific locations, uh, you can also define those by entering X Y Z positions, uh, etc. Okay, so uh, Python, uh, I've, I've shown a couple of these uh, capabilities that we put on the, uh, the quick macro panel. Uh, Python, uh, with, with the Python toolkits, PyQt, you can actually create custom user interfaces. So here, uh, it took me about uh, you know, a few hours to, to write this custom user interface using uh, the Python language. And this has a lot of these capabilities that you have right here on, on the quick macro panel as, as well. So, uh, again, if I if I want to uh, show the crank angle uh, or show RPM, uh, just single click. If I want to jump to a specific crank angle, I can do that uh, right here. So really, I'm I'm centralizing a lot of the uh, a lot of the capabilities that you as a converge user might need in uh, in one nice, easy to use uh, dialogue using the Python language. So. Uh, with that, that's uh, that's the, the live demo portion. So let me jump back into PowerPoint, and then we'll make sure to uh, answer any questions that may have come in during uh, during that demonstration. So uh, just a couple of more slides here. So uh, really, in in summary, uh, you know, TechPlot uh, TechPlot Incorporated, we're really focused on solving uh, big problems in post processing. And like I said earlier, uh, that's uh, big data. Uh, which TechPlot 360 is is very good at handling very large data sets. Uh, at uh, the upcoming uh, aviation conference in June, uh, AIAA conference, uh, our CTO is going to be giving a uh, presenting a white paper on visualizing a trillion cell data set. That's a trillion with a T, not a B, uh, on a on a, a consumer not a consumer workstation, but a, a high powered workstation, 128 or 192 gigs. But a trillion cells on on a single workstation uh, would previously have been thought impossible, but uh, we've developed some technology to make that possible. Our 2018 version of TechPlot 360 is over two times faster than 2014. Uh, we've added uh, a client-server architecture to uh, to the product if you're using our newest file format, which we call Sizzle. Uh, we have unlimited CPU threads, so for all of that streamline, uh, the streamlines, the slices, uh, if you have you know a 24-core machine, we're going to use all 24 cores. Uh, so no artificial limits there. Uh, unlimited pages and frames, as you saw, you can create some really nice multi-page, multi-frame layouts. Uh, you could bring in multiple data sets uh, to compare, uh, not only in the line plots, but in 3D plots as well. Uh, understanding ensembles, so again, if you're doing comparative analysis or have uh, need design space exploration tools, TechPlot Chorus, which again comes with TechPlot 360, is uh, a nice tool there. And automation and customization, uh, Python being uh, really, uh, I think, the, uh, the the language that is, uh, it's, it's kind of the de facto glue language for tying many processes together these days. So you can speed up uh, your automation, you can build custom GUIs, and you can even do headless plot generation. So if you are running on an HPC and don't have a graphics card out there, uh, you can use TechPlot 360 uh, as well as our PyTechPlot uh, API to uh, generate some, some really nice plots. Uh, to learn more about uh, TechPlot 360, uh, you can try it for free. Uh, we have a hassle-free uh, hassle uh, five-day trial. Uh, if, uh, if you need an extension, we can, of course, give you an extension uh, available at that link there. Uh, visit our website, uh, www.techplot.com. Our office uh, in the U.S., if you want more information, you can, of course, contact me directly or info at techplot.com. Uh, or uh, if, uh, if you're on the European continent, we have a European distributor. Uh, their name is Genius Graphics, uh, and their email address is info at techplot.de. Uh, if you are in other regions around the world, uh, we do have distributors worldwide, uh, and those are all listed on uh, the website techplot.com. So with that, let me uh, let me pass control back over to uh, Tiffany, uh, and uh, we'll start taking uh, some some questions and uh, and give you some answers. 
Uh, we do have a few questions there. If you'd like to, or if you can have a little, if you have a little bit of time to kind of address those. Uh, what is the memory requirement per million cells of Converge? Uh, I'm not sure I'm uh, equipped to answer that question on the Converge side, but uh, on, the, on the tech plot side, uh, per million cells, I, I can't give you a good uh, memory requirement. Uh, that uh, oftentimes depends on your data file format and how many variables you're, uh, you're loading in the plot. Uh, tech plot does have some, uh, some nice technology where we unload data that is unused and we don't load data that uh, you haven't used yet. Uh, so tech plot uh, at least does a very good job of, uh, of memory management. Uh, is it possible to overlay two contour or scatter plots from different times on the same plot? Uh, so, uh, you know, TechPlot does have a lot of uh, a lot of flexibility. We have what we call multiple contour groups. So it certainly would be possible to uh, to do uh, two different uh, contour colorings uh, in the same plot. Uh, you could also use multiple frames uh, if you wanted to as well. So, uh, so you should have the flexibility there. Uh, can TechPlot automatically find the min-max values of a particular time to create contours? Uh, not really automatically. Uh, I showed you that macro to plot the max over time. Uh, and that'll that'll help out. Uh, TechPlot, when uh, trying to, uh, when setting up those contour levels, uh, we uh, use a, uh, a, we generally look at the first time step, the last time step, and some time step in the middle to try to pick good uh, values for the contours, uh, but uh, using that macro uh, plot max over time uh, can be a nice way to do that. Okay, uh, does TechPlot have keyframe animation? Yes, we do. Uh, if you go to the, uh, I believe it's the animate file menu or animate menu on the on the main menu, uh, there is a keyframe animation. Uh, you can set up multiple uh, view positions. It does a linear interpolation of, uh, of the view between the view positions. So, uh, you know, the, the more intermediate steps that you pick, uh, the, the better in that case. Uh, one user says that uh, it sounds like they're already trying this out. Uh, I get an error when I load uh, the .out file. So at the beginning of the presentation, I showed the emissions.out file. The, the critical thing there is to make sure that you've selected the general text loader uh, for, for the loader. TechPlot, uh, our file load dialog uh, will try to match uh, the extension to a loader that has been registered to recognize that extension. Uh, dot out is not one of the recognized extensions for gen the general text loader, so you have to select that loader uh, explicitly. Uh, does TechPlot load all time steps at once? Uh, the I guess the answer is yes and no. Uh, yes, we will scan we'll scan through all the files to understand how many time steps we are and what the time step values are, but we don't actually load the data until we advance to the frame uh, that has that time step. So uh, so that way when you when you load uh, at least in in tech plot formats, uh, when you load all in this case, I loaded 145 tech plot files. Uh, realistically, we're only looking at the header information for all those 145 and load just the first one. And then as you advance, uh, we load each one in turn. And if we do hit a, uh, a memory threshold on your machine, we'll start unloading time steps that are uh, that have have not been accessed recently. So we have uh, what we call a, a cell aging algorithm to uh, to unload data. It uh, looks like there are just a couple of more questions here and then uh, and then we'll be done. So uh, how is the rendering uh, performance of TechPlot? Can it also use multiple threads to render? Uh, uh, the rendering performance is highly dependent on your graphics card. Uh, so that, that's about all I can say there. We, uh, we, we have found that uh, the engineering grade graphics cards, uh, particularly the NVIDIA Quadro cards, uh, are, are going to give the best performance that, uh, that we've seen here. Uh, for animations, can we save individual frames to images? Uh, you can do that uh, through a, a tech plot macro. Uh, we have uh, macro commands for stepping through time and then exporting individual uh, images, uh, but that's not built into the user interface. Uh, and then uh, last question is, uh, is there a Python API for tech plot chorus? Uh, no, there, there is not. Uh, we, uh, we we don't have an API for that one yet. Lots of, lots of great questions. So I, I, I appreciate all of your time and all of your attention. 
Uh, Tiffany, if you have any closing remarks, uh, I'm done over here. I uh, just want to encourage everyone to, you know, if you have further questions, to definitely visit TechPlot's website, reach out to Scott, um, or if you have some questions concerning Converge CFD software, we'd be happy to help you out with those as well. So thank you for joining us.